Thingiverse has sprung a leak. I think Thangs is maybe trying to create Skynet. And if you are wondering just where could I possibly just share the cool things that I've made with other people, well, we have a new hope. Actually, we have an old hope, but it may get rebranded. The point is, we have hope, and let's talk about that. Hey, everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and if you haven't heard, Thingiverse had a major data breach. Basically, what happened was they took their website and backed it up, which is good on a public server that anybody could access, which is less good, with unencrypted passwords, which is really, really bad. So if you have made a Thingiverse account, you need to log onto it and change your password right now. It's really simple to do that. I think that if you log onto it right now, they automatically change your password. But if they don't, all you have to do is go over to, click down and go to your profile, then click edit your profile, then go to MakerBot account, scroll down, change your password right there. It's uh, it's as easy as that. But for many people, let me just slide on over whoop, here. For many people, this is kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. They're saying, you know, Thingiverse has not been working very well for a long time. It's been problematic. And, and the fact is, you know, Stratasys just doesn't care. And, and that's not entirely true. I, I noticed that Stratasys has updated Thingiverse to take, if you, I don't know, put a affiliate link, an Amazon link in the description of your text, they will take that Amazon link and turn it into their affiliate link, even if it was your affiliate link that you put in there. And that's kind of jerky. But you know what? This is their website. They can do whatever they want with it. And so, hey, if if that's the price, they're not charging me to use it. If that's the price that they want, I guess it's their website. They can do what they want. But for many other people, they're like, yeah, this, this data breach and the slowness, a lot of people are just running away from Thingiverse. And the thing is, this isn't the first time that I've heard this refer refrain a little while ago. When MakerBot took their designs and put them all closed source, the Occupy Thingiverse movement kicked into place and people were saying, we need to occupy Thingiverse by taking all of our stuff off of Thingiverse and going somewhere else. I, I don't think that's what Occupy means, but nevertheless. Also, when Stratasys bought MakerBot and they were like, oh, well, now this means that MakerBot and Thingiverse is owned by a major corporation that doesn't care about us. A lot of people left Thingiverse at that time. But but despite these mass migrations over and over again away from Thingiverse, Thingiverse still remains the number one repository for files for 3D printing. And a lot of that has to do with education. See, if, if you're a teacher and you tell your kids to go download a file for 3D printing, where do you tell them to go? On some teachers, in many syllabuses, it says go to Thingiverse. And the thing is, we need to change that. If you are a teacher or if you know a teacher who has go to Thingiverse in their syllabus, tell them, hey, listen, you just need to make this quick change and you need to say go to Yegi instead. Yegi is basically like Google, but for 3D print files. So just switch it to to search for Yegi. And Yegi will take you to all kinds of sites. It'll take you to Thingiverse, sure, but it'll also take you to, well, all of the various places that people are going to when they go away from Thingiverse, like Umagine. Umagine is an open source kind of version of Thingiverse that a lot of people go to. It's still active, it's still going, it's still out there. Uh, there's Pin Shape, there's Cults, there's my mini factory all of these sites are alternate repositories where you could host your 3d print files but all of these sites kind of have a problem see the problem with these sites is that there's no economic reason for them to run these sites most of these sites are being run because well because these are good people who love 3d printing and want to provide an alternative to thingiverse quite frankly but Running a website takes time and building a website takes time and takes money and maintaining it and promoting it and 
all these things. And if the website isn't making money, it's going to be hard for them to keep it up. And a lot of these websites, a lot of these repositories are running into that problem. Which brings me to one that you might have heard about. Thangs is another repository for uploading your files. And a little while ago, I made a video saying, I don't, I don't get Thangs. There's something about Thangs. There's what the 3D printing community needs, and there's the teeth of the cogs of Thangs, and they're not quite lining up, and I couldn't understand why. But in the process of making that video, a lot of people told me information that I couldn't figure out, and I got to talk to the people who run Thangs, and they got to tell me a little bit about what Thangs is doing, basically. Thangs is creating a repository of 3D print files that they can use to train an AI. Okay, so if you don't know, training an AI is, is a cool new, I say new, relatively new idea in programming where instead of writing lines of code or figuring out the algorithm yourself, you kind of create this general algorithm that has a lot of variables that can be flopped on it. And then you randomly flop variables and you test it against a data set to see how well it does. And then you test it against another data set and you have some data that's just noise and you have some data that's what you're looking for and you see how well the AI performs. But the thing is, whenever you're training an AI, you're training it for something, for some reason. And my question to the Thangs people is what is that? What, what, what are you training the AI to do? And my conversations with them went a lot like, uh, have you ever seen the South Park underwear gnome episode? Yeah, when they got to the underwear gnomes, it was exactly like that, only change collecting underwear to collecting 3D files. So, yeah, uh, so what, what's your business plan? Well, we're going to collect 3D files and then, and then profit. Now, I don't know if that kind of omission in the middle was because they have a plan for these 3D files and they don't want to disclose what it is, either because we wouldn't approve of it or for some other reason, or if they don't know what that plan is. If that plan is we will have this repository, we will tell people what the, that we have this repository, and then when somebody says, hey, I need to train my AI, We'll say, hey, cool, we'll license them this repository that we've collected. And and I, I feel like maybe that's the more likely case, that they don't know what they want it for. They're going to present it to a client and hopefully get a client because they're taking a lot of venture capital money for this. And they're taking that venture capital money and they're spreading it out among the 3D printing community, which I absolutely love. And I haven't taken any of this. This video is not sponsored by Thangs, even though once again, I'm talking about them, but I can talk about them freely because it's not sponsored by Thangs. Now let's think for a second, what could an AI be trained to do with 3D files? If you have any ideas for this, I want to hear about them in the comments, but off the top of my head, I can only think of a couple of possibilities. Possibility number one, we could train an AI to identify specific types of files. Maybe they could identify gun parts, right? If you wanted to have a 3D printer that you could say, you can't 3D print a gun on our 3D, on our 3D printer, so now it's safe for schools of HP or Kodak or some big name wanted to get into 3D printing and they wanted that as a selling point, well, we could make an AI and just throw at it remeshed 3D print files for guns and see if we can get an AI to identify it. That's one possibility. Another possibility is maybe Disney is tired of all the baby Groots and baby Yodas and Mickey Mouses that are out there. And so they say, here, let's train an AI to hunt for those specific 3D files. And if they find something that's close enough to it, have it do an automated DCMA takedown, which, yeah, I, I don't particularly like that idea, but I could see it happening. Also, maybe it could be used for model generation. I don't know quite how, but wouldn't it be neat to just kind of throw an idea at a computer and have the AI just generate the 3D model and just check it against our 3D models and say, is it in the ballpark of what we're looking for? Does it fit within a good 3D model? And then have that? Like, that would be way cool. 
I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't know that they know what they're going to do with it. And I'd love to hear what you think they're going to do with it. Now, the thing is, Thangs has got the ability, I think right here, uh, let me just flop to the other side here. You can say, uh, if you upload, here it is. No, nope. oh, there we go. Import from Thingiverse. You could jump on Thangs. You could hit upload. You could import all of your files from Thingiverse, and then you could delete your Thingiverse account. But here's here's what my Thangs profile looks like so far. I haven't uploaded anything to Thangs because, quite frankly, I'm not sure I want to support the building of Cybernet. Although, although I'll be honest, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And somebody else is just going to scrape Thingiverse and do it, and they're not going to tell us about it. So at least Thangs is upfront about what they're doing, and I can respect that. So maybe I should. Let me know in the comments if you think, you know what, Joe, just grab all your Thingiverse files and throw them on Thangs. Because now that we understand what Thangs is doing, we don't feel bad about them, or we do. Let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. There's also a lot of things on my Thingiverse profile. If you go back to the oldest things on my Thingiverse profile, there's a lot of stuff there that I haven't even printed yet. And uh, I, I keep thinking, I keep looking at it. Every time I look at my old Thingiverse profile, I'm like, oh, I should update that. I should change that. And I just don't have enough hours in the day to remodel everything that I made back when I first started. And so it just kind of sits there. But let me know what you think. Is it time for me to abandon Thingiverse? But I said we have hope. There is a repository that has an economic reason to keep providing a place for you to share 3D print models, and that is Prusa Printers. Now, prusaprinters.org. I heard recently that they were thinking about rebranding the website. And, and I will say this, if they were to rebrand it as Prusa Prints and not Prusa Printers, because this is a website for prints, not for their printers, I would 100% support that. But it sounds like what they're trying to do is take the word Prusa out so that people realize that this is not just for Prusa 3D printers. And the thing about that is I'm, I'm okay with Prusa becoming the new like generic name for a 3d printer because MakerBot used to be like people would say hey have you got a MakerBot?" when it could be any it could be an ana a a it could be anything this is i think before creality but make the word MakerBot meant 3d printer and i would be okay with people saying have you got a prusa meaning have you got a 3d printer i don't know how joseph would feel about people saying that and meaning an Ender 3, but I'm okay with Prusa being the brand of 3D printers. I feel like they've earned that, but regardless of what happens, if Prusa decides to rename this website something more inclusive, it doesn't matter. This website is right now the best place that you have to upload your 3D models and share them with other people. And you know what else? They've also got uh, somewhere in here, I'm not sure where it is, but they've got somewhere on their website, somewhere that you can import all of your models from Thingiverse and then delete your Thingiverse account. So I say do it on Prusa printers. Now I've been uploading all sorts of great stuff to Prusa printers. If you haven't seen it, I've uploaded a Electroblocks project that is this little uh, this little keyboard project. And, and if you get the right uh, circuit and everything's all listed on here, right there. And that's actually, that's actually an Amazon affiliate link that they didn't override, but it's also not my Amazon affiliate link. This goes to the person who originally made this uh, project and I just made it, you know, printer blocky, uh, which means that you can make it modular and extend it and do other cool things with it. But nevertheless, it's a cool project. It's kind of an extension keyboard. And if you get this five volt Arduino Pro Micro here, it will uh, it will actually just route to your USB like a keyboard. I love this project. It's It's been really cool to play with. And you can just get the files here. I love how Prusa Printers allows you to organize files. Thingiverse never did this. Where I've got the plates here, but then I've got the parts here. And then I've even got the code and the instructions here. So there we go. Prusa Printers, I feel like, 
is right now the best place that we can go to share our 3D print files and honestly to give love to Prusa who has been a huge cornerstone in the community for years. They deserve this. So this right now is my recommendation for where you should upload your 3D print files. But if you've got another repository that you like better, and mind you, I've got nothing against some of those other repositories, most of those other repositories, my manufacturing and Colts and you imagine they're all made by great people. And if you want to use them, use them. Me, myself, I've only got so many hours in the day to upload my files. So I think I'm going to be using Prusa printers quite a lot. But tell me your thoughts on Thingiverse. Are you done with it? Are you ready to just give it up? Should I give it up? Should I move my stuff from Thingiverse to Fangs and let them have it and let them build the uh, AI future that is inevitably going to happen? Or should I hold off on that? I want to hear your thoughts on it. So sound off in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, safety first, because I really do care about you. And I'll see you next time.